you can't see what I see, cause I'm me, cause I'm me, you can't see. What's going on, people? It's your boy Levi. I'm back in the building, man. Yes, y'all see what time it is, man. I got another reaction for y'all today, man. And uh, this right here, this is a request for one of my dope ass subscribers, man. Or if you just was in the comment section, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment right now. Because we're going up from here, man. Let's get this 2K. Y'all know what time it is. We're going to get to that 2K, but we also need to get to the million, 5K, 3K, 20K, 80K. We get to a million, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this right here, this right here is Houdini. City of Fallen Rappers. Now, y'all know I've been doing a lot of these uh, reactions and checking out these videos, bro. I like doing this. Shout out to the, the drill pages out there, man. I see a couple of y'all motherfuckers beefing too. Like, what they got beefing about, bro? What is going on? The beef must be really real for y'all to be on here beefing and shit. But I don't know. Some, I think Driller said something about like he, he was like, I see people in the comments saying he was the OG, like he first started doing these drill videos and shit. But um. I don't know, y'all let me know what's the big deal like this going on, bro. We're gonna get into this Houdini in the city of fallen rappers. Let's go, let's gotta hit that like trap geek. Shout out to you, bro. You become a target. But not only you're a target, you're rapping about these people. Your house is ten times the size of they house. That would make me dislike me if I was on the other side. Myself. I wasn't that little body for help. She wanted me because the name ring a bell. Designer the juice on the side of the bell. He was just like my favorite. Houdini in the city of fall rappers. Okay, that's the dude. That's the dude. That's that's why you put that request in. This is the guy that I was talking about that just passed away not too not too long ago, but and I was like, damn, bro, I, I never heard of him. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, I remember that chain. <laughs> I remember the chain. Because everybody got dreads, bro, so it's like, I couldn't really remember, but I remember the chain, bro. But this is him right here, bro. Houdini in the city of Fallen Rappers. Let's get it. Rapper, literally anyone, he was my favorite. When you really think about it, yeah, most artists do get killed in their, their home city. Mm -hmm. But why do you think that is? Adrian, people looking at you, hey, saying I wish that was me. Bullets sent many fleeing for their lives here on this stretch. Now the 21-year-old has been identified as a popular Toronto rapper. All right, we got to talk about the Houdini story, right? The jealousy and hatred rappers got to deal with in their own home city is terrible. And that's a fact in every state in America. But one of the most violent cities right now for up-and-coming rappers to make it out of is Toronto. And people don't realize this. There's a reason Toronto's becoming one of the most surveyed cities in North America. It's looking like Beijing. They're getting cameras everywhere. Only Atlanta, Chicago, and DC camera, got more surveillance per person. And that's because of the ongoing gang war that's been escalating for years, right? It's literally hunting season on rappers. And that's exactly what happened to Houdini. Houdini was sitting down with record labels in LA, New York, collabing with Pop Smoke. This kid was the real deal. Until a couple weeks ago, he was brutally shot and killed in broad daylight. That's crazy, bro. Nigga look like Travis Scott even a little bit, bro. Like, I guess the hate was just real. Like, I don't gotta look at this a little more, but I don't. Like, it just seems like it just was hate, you know what I'm saying? He ain't really had no beef with nobody. It's just. The hate is just real, bro. In the entertainment district of downtown Toronto. And this shit was surgical. They used Glock 9s with 30 round mags. They took advantage of Corona season by wearing medical masks to hide their faces. There was a six year old kid that got caught in the crossfire dodging bullets. That has a high capacity magazine. It's a 30 round magazine. And as this unfolds, I want you to pay attention to the little boy that ducks into the vestibule here. The whole thing is nuts, right? And the city is shook right now. Now we're gonna get into all of this, but before we do, my song of the day today is none other than Houdini himself. Let's go. That's why it's good for me to be checking out a lot of these artists, bro. Cause like, if you don't, if an artist passed away that you don't know about, you be like, damn, bro. It's like, okay, another artist coming. But then it's like, you got people out there that's been rocking with these niggas' music, and it's like, 
you got to give it a chance. If you got a crazy fan base, if they saying it's good, it got to be good, right? It's like, mm -hmm. we okay. I'm, I'm going to let y'all know. In order to understand this story, we gotta focus on one hood in particular in Toronto called Driftwood or Northside Jane and Finch. And this is where Houdini's from. Now they're by far the most influential in terms of music in the city, but they're also a notorious crip faction, right? They beef with pretty much everybody in the city. To the south of them, the south side of Jane and Finch. So he got beef with a lot of niggas, okay. Mm -hmm. Down bottom. Top lane, Eddie Pack, V Lane, 29s, Y Block, Yellow Rock, Short, Short Shot, D Block, Woods, G Side, T Block. Ooh, they bang blood, and that's their direct rival. The lowest income neighborhood in the city called Regent also has tension with Driftwood, stemming from rap beefs and rap killings. And another area called Rexdale has been Driftwood's rival for damn near a decade now. So they beef with everybody. Now in 2015, Driftwood kids kinda instilled the Chirac music vibe up in the north in Canada. They were putting disses to rivals and tracks bro. and talking about the stuff they were doing in the street in their lyrics. Now that song is Robin Banks featuring Pressa. Pressa is one of the few who actually crossed over to the mainstream American scene and he's actually living in Cali right now in a nice mansion. His rap career popped off for him, but before all that... That nigga said, I'm gone, nigga, because I'm going to L.A. I ain't dealing with that, that bull y'all got going on. Right. Involved in a case where he allegedly kidnapped two drug dealers, moving them around from location to location, holding them for ransom, until eventually what? forcing them to give each other head in front of everybody. Two Come dudes. Now. That's wow. crazy. Now, Preston. Why are you making two niggas give head? Like. Would you do something like that? Would you make niggas give. Like, Come on, bro. Like. You know, Later cleared already. those charges and granted the court's permission to go on tour with Drake out in England. And another rapper got six years in Press's place for the charge. Now Press's partner Robin Banks, who was in that track that I just showed, he was practically the pioneer for the scene, right? He had the torch early on from 2015 and he kind of started this organic hood label Driftwood where he was putting on all the rappers from his area. Robin Banks started getting millions of views, caught the attention of Meek Mill who really rocked with the movement. Meek Mill and Robin Banks were sending paperwork back and forth. He was about to sign a deal with the Dream Chasers Robbie and to Dream celebrate Chasers. he was having a party at a hookah lounge called Cameo where unfortunately his ops found out about it, infiltrated the party and shot him up nine times, leaving him in critical condition. Just as this man was about to cross over to the U.S. scene, they orchestrated that hit on. Now, thankfully, Robert Banks is alive, but he's. Mm. I never thought about that. Niggas trying to cross over. Like, you big where you at, but you got niggas still trying to cross over. And you got some niggas over here who be trying to blow up, trying to cross over, trying to, you know, do shows over there. And it's like, damn. It's, it's, that's just like when you about to blow up, niggas always trying to take you out, bro. It be like that, man. Niggas be just hating, bro. You gotta stay positive and keep moving, bro. Paralyzed from the neck down, and his ops were super disrespectful, posting memes of him in a wheelchair and stuff. Now he's still doing his thing, releasing tracks, and of course pushing the rappers from Driftwood on his label. But the rivals going after Robin Banks like that really escalated the violence in the city, and it made it kind of a trophy for people to target rappers. This was like the first high-profile assassination attempt on a rapper who was about to cross over. Now the next year, the most influential artist out of the country was Smoke Dog. Now I'm not from Toronto, you don't gotta be from Toronto to know Smoke Dog. He was getting co-signed by Drake, doing shit. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that dude passed away, didn't he? Smoke Dog, yeah, I, think, I think it was him, bro. You know shit pop up on Instagram. Then like, I don't even see it no more, bro. I in the UK, in the US, and he's from the place called Regent Park. Now this is pretty much the trenches, right? It's the lowest income community in the whole city, but it's not very close to Driftwood. And because of that, they didn't really have too much tension back and forth until one summer night at a club in 2018, Smoke Dog got into a heated argument with a Driftwood rapper by the name of 21 Neat. And this shit escalated quickly, right? They stepped outside where 21 Neat 
shot and killed Smoke Dog and his manager. Probably one of the most gruesome after death videos I've seen of a rapper, right? Yeah. People were filming him and Smoke Dog's brain matter was like leaking on the road. It was a wild scene. You now this pretty much gave Region the green light to go after Driftwood as retaliation. And this created a whole bunch of new problems in the city where two neighborhoods that otherwise didn't have too much tension now had maximum levels of tension. And Driftwood didn't really care. Like they were welcoming all smoke. Now the Toronto police didn't arrest the rapper 21 Neat for quite some time. They couldn't find him. There were even rumors that he escaped to Somalia, but... <laughs> Nigga that dipped off to Somalia. He should have went to Mexico, bro. Right? He should have went to Mexico, bro, right? for real. Nigga trying to transfer over, that's just like pop smoke, bro. Like, you got a buzz and you go and you drop a shit, it's like, damn, bro. Well, you ain't gonna get this, you ain't gonna get this back, bro, so you gotta enjoy it right now while it's out. He eventually got found out all the way out in the west coast of the country near Vancouver, where he was extradited back to Toronto to stand trial for the murder of Smoke Dog. Now this is when the story gets wild, because 21 Neat has a brother who goes by the name of 22 Neat, right? They're both from Driftwood, they're from the same block as Pressa, Robin Banks, they're all homies. Which is why it was weird when everyone found out five months ago in December of 2019, 22 Neat killed his own homie and fellow rapper on their label named YS. YS had just gotten back from doing a bit in jail and he was on a bunch of tracks that were getting hundreds of thousands of views and out of nowhere, the feds found YS's body all the way out on the west coast of the country near Vancouver and the rumors started circulating that 22 Meat, his own homie, was the one who pulled the trigger. Nobody really knows why he did it, but some people say it was money that's that, not yeah. been confirmed. Anyways, 22 Neat knew there would be repercussions, so he fled to a place called Calgary, Alberta. But he didn't last long. They actually he found him dead two days later do that. as revenge for what he did to the homie YS. Now at this point, the city's in crisis, and Driftwood was putting out all this talent, but this horrific stuff kept happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 30, 30. The next to pop out of the city was this rap duo formed by two brothers from Driftwood oh, well, known as the Talib Twins. They had this track with 5 million views that was scorching hot in the city and in the US as well before one of the twins eventually got locked up. So the other twin decided to keep the momentum going and kept releasing these fire tracks under the name the Talib Twins. In February of 2020, the Talib twin was at a condo party on the 32nd floor of an Airbnb rental when two of his ops infiltrated the party and started opening fire. The Talib twin bro, fired back and managed to kill both shit, of them before he himself died at right the scene. Way. And there's a bunch of speculation as to what happened. I mean, you can't make this shit up, right? Like bro, some people say he bro. tripped and shot himself. But the feds believe he went into another room in the condo and just ended his own life. Like the story's crazy and the thing with Driftwood and the politics in the city is they beef with so many places that sometimes it's hard to say who is responsible for targeting. They got a lot of enemies. And then of course, at the end of May, the single biggest name out of Toronto Houdini. who's not Drake or Tory Lanez or The Weeknd was the rapper Houdini. Now as I said in my intro, this is a kid who is sitting down with record labels in New York and Los Angeles. You already know the ops is probably watching like man, we cannot. Even if, but these niggas so lazy bro, they so like jealous bro. It's sad bro, like niggas need to stop doing that shit. You gotta stick together, get this paper bro. Like, niggas out here, this nigga could've put y'all on if y'all just would've Throw out a little, hey, we could do a feature or something, bro. Like, you ending this nigga's life is not gonna make you rich, bro. Like, and even though niggas is on different sides and shit, it's like, nigga, I still gotta stick together, bro. Like, what you doing? He was gonna go places. But unfortunately, as the trend is in the city, Houdini was in the entertainment district of Toronto late in the afternoon. And little did he know, there was a Volkswagen Tiguan that was lying in wait on the east side of a street called Blue Jays Way, which is right where he had to go by. They were waiting for a long time, over 40 minutes. And Houdini was with a 15 year old boy at the time, and they were making their way down the street. And once they got in range of the Volkswagen, a lone shooter got out of the vehicle and started unloading a bunch of clips in Houdini's direction. There was this little kid who was caught in the crossfire as well as a family, like this whole thing is on CCTV footage, right? It's heart wrenching. And they unloaded a bunch of clips into Houdini who got hit and kept running, right? Adrenaline, even if you get wounded mortally, 
he could still run because you got adrenaline. So he was running with a bunch of bullets in his body and then eventually collapsed and died. And the 50 year old kid who was with Houdini was also strapped. And he was trying to get off shots back at the assailants and then his gun jammed, right? Which he got rid of in an alleyway and ran away. Now Meek Mill, Tory Lanez, and a whole bunch of others took to social media to express their condolences as soon as this happened. And you can see just how much the industry was rocking with Houdini. Like this was a kid who was about to make it. But just look at Toronto. The city is in shambles right now. Like the retaliation killings have already been ordered. Houdini's own memorial got shot up in this ridiculous video you can see it on YouTube. It's like this drive-by style wow. video where out of the darkness. Imagine this how much nigga got hate in his heart just to pull up at your field and shoot the shit up like, like nigga, like niggas must be really on some devil time shit, bro. Like I know Toronto was like that, bro. That's that's, that's wild, bro. Wow, bro car pulls up, starts opening fire into a crowd. The whole crowd is strapped up, so they immediately start firing back, but this shit is nuts. I know this happens in the States, it's nothing new, but I'm coining Toronto the city of the fallen rappers because the trend recently of the up and coming rappers who are now dead is just unparalleled. Like, you can't compare it. But yeah, man, that's it for this video. Rest in peace to Houdini, gone but not forgotten. Check out his music when you get a chance. And yeah, man, I'll see you in the next one. Crazy man, Houdini in the city of Fall. Rest in peace, all Fall's Fall rappers, man, for real. Like, it's crazy, bro. That's so why we said, like, I ain't gonna lie, I, I heard what that nigga Daylight was saying from, from LA. He was like, you can't be out here talking about Black Lives Matter and you already ain't the music talking about killing rappers and killing niggas and shit, period, bro. Like, and he's right, bro, he's right. White people start killing us and shit, like, it's gonna go crazy. But when we do it, it's like, it's okay, and that's not okay, bro. It's like, back up, like, motherfucker. Hopefully, hopefully shit will get better, man. People need to just relax and just, just smoke yourself, bro. Like, calm your nerves, bro. There's a lot of shit going on out here, man. But hopefully everybody stay positive, stay safe, man. Uh, we'll see y'all on the next video. Peace. You can see what I see, cause I'm me, cause I'm me, yeah.